Hello and welcome back to the Metropolitan Culture Corner, where this month I interview singer, songwriter, guitarist, also a clinical immunologist, uh, yes, we'll get to that in a moment, Carlos Mendoza. He was born in Caracas, Venezuela and moved to Barcelona along with several of his friends who happened to be the members of one of his bands, a critically acclaimed rock group called Luz Verde. With the band Luz Verde, he has been nominated for a Latin Grammy. The band also won the prestigious Sol Dorado Award for Best Rock Band in Venezuela. They have released seven albums and have legions of fans across the Spanish-speaking world, especially in Latin America. And for the past decade, Carlos has also been an integral part of another musical project, rock and rumba band Ama de Boquerón, led by singer-songwriter Jordi Nathenta. They started out as a fun bar band, but since then they have grown to a six-piece powerhouse which regularly plays clubs and festivals and has one of the most loyal fan bases that I have ever seen. And they also have quite a body of work. They have released five studio albums as well as a compilation of greatest hits. Carlos Mendoza is one of the most natural frontmen I've ever had the opportunity to witness with this absolutely explosive magnetic star power and limitless energy on stage that reminds you of somebody like Freddie Mercury. And I know those are big words, but you've got to see the guy to believe it. He is equally at home on big stages as on small ones, or in the studio, or in an ER clinic where he's tending to a patient's illness or injury. Yes, as I mentioned, aside from being a Grammy-nominated musician, he is also a doctor with a specialization in clinical immunology, and he is currently getting his master's in emergency medicine. Carlos is also a dad, and yes, he sometimes, occasionally, takes the time to sleep. But to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how he balances it all. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to interview him to find out. Please welcome our guest this month. Carlos Mendoza. Hello, how are you? Hello, good afternoon or good morning. Yeah, <laughs> I like to start at the very, very beginning because I see your guitar behind you. Mm. What led you to the guitar? What made you first start playing music in the first place? Accidents? Mm. Did your parents make you go to music lessons? What happened? All of that, all of that. Accidents, my parents made me go. But the guitar is uh, the mutation of my piano lessons. And my piano lessons were at my grandma's back in Venezuela. They had a beautiful pianola. You know what a pianola is? This piano, you open it up and you put a scroll in it with the little holes and then it plays all by itself and you can learn to play with it. It was so much fun. Sundays there. And my uncle used to play a bit of piano. My mom also, my grandmas, both of them, they sang. Actually, one played in bars and such. Yeah, cool, cool grandma. As a kid, I always around music. My dad used to take us to jazz jam in London when I lived there. And when I got back to Venezuela, yeah, piano it was. During three years, I was playing piano, piano, piano. Then my teacher, for political reasons, went back to Chile. Yeah, political reasons are a big reason for people to move around, right? Yeah. And finally, I was like done with the piano. I wasn't happy with any teachers, but I met rock and roll. And thanks to my auntie, it's all a family thing. My auntie gave this uh, radio alarm clock. Okay. And I used to listen to late night rock shows. Like, I guess in the States it's the same, mm -hmm. here is the same. Rock and roll was only late night. So I was listening to this and getting excited about it. Led Zeppelin was a big thing. Then I asked my mom, oh, I'd love an electric guitar. My mom was like, yeah, check in the closet. There's a guitar your dad. My dad, I didn't know if he even played, went and dug in the closet and there was a Spanish acoustic guitar. I'm like, well, it's not quite an electric guitar, but <laughs> we'll do to start. And yeah, my dad said, no, for sure, I'll buy you an electric guitar. He always loved music. But he said, look, if you learn a couple of songs in the guitar, I'll hook you up with an electric one. That's good motivation. Your dad kind of indirectly led to your guitaring, but your dad is also a doctor, right? So your dad accidentally yeah. led you to the kind of your two paths. How did you combine rock and roll and medicine? Because they don't seem like very related career paths. <laughs> yeah, good gene. My dad, well, he's a hard worker. He's passionate about the medicine. I love medicine, but I'm not passionate about it. But he's like, whenever he's not working, then he's struggling. He's like fish in the water whenever he's working, long shifts. And my mom, she's like a big reader and also sleeps little. So I guess I never did this. And this is an important thing because I remember studying medicine, so many hours studying with my pals, and they helped me a lot. And running to a rehearsal and then coming back, the guys maybe were watching TV, so I had to speed up and catch up with them. So it's sleeping little to be able to do it all. I mean, if you're motivated, if you want to do it, you just do it. 
And it's, it's always been like this. I would never say like, no, I won't do a concert because I'm too tired. And I will never say like, no, I will go to work or whatever. I mean, just gotta do it. It's my way of thinking and my way of living through life. That's not an exaggeration. I've seen you do a 24 hour shift at the emergency room and then come do a show. And you always say, oh yeah, I'm tired, but you look more rock and roll tired than most people who I know who have not just worked a 24 hour shift. So, ole. When you're on the stage, you just burst with energy. You know how it is. Being live, expressing yourself, and while well, having a tuned guitar helps. <laughs> Speaking of a tuned guitar, I was told a story about how you got together with your first band, which you still play with, Luz Verde, when you were 13 years old, 12, 13, something like this. The story went that you joined a rehearsal with them and you informed them that one of the important steps of playing rock and roll was tuning your guitar. Is that a true story? Or how did you start playing with Luz Verde? It was exactly like this. We studied all in the same school, really small school, bilingual school there in Venezuela. And most of us, when we were 12, 13, 1914 started out with the guitar that time when I dug my dad's guitar out of the closet and everybody was starting to play a little bit of guitar and practicing and trying to do some rock and roll and some guys from the year older than me were like oh this guy plays guitar it seems like he plays cool I sometimes took the guitar to choir we had choir in the school so I was always in that trying to avoid classes and skip classes I preferred to go to choir that was me so I took my guitar so they have heard me they came to my house hey would you like to be in this band they were cool now they had longer hair when you're older it makes a difference when you're that young and we went to rehearse it was a disaster everybody playing whatever and whichever tone not even playing the same song actually I was like all good all good I really want to be in a band and you guys seem like kind of nice people but we need to tune guys like amongst each other <laughs> you know mm -hmm. yeah it was very interesting but after this with will that was the guy who had the idea of hiring me with will i've known the guy since we were seven eight years we started playing together like 12 13 and we still write some songs together we still play some gigs together more than a brother it's awesome yeah, because how do you keep a project together for, how long has it been now? 30 years? Yeah, it's even bigger than love, you know? We share the same dream, same background. We moved together to Spain. He was with his girlfriend at the time. I was with my companion at the time and the rest of the band. We were like, yeah, let's go. Venezuela was looking, the future was looking tricky. We were not wrong. Right. We were like, where could we expand a little bit our rock and roll albums? We had one finishing the second one with Luz Verde. We were like, where do we go? Well, we should go somewhere where they speak Spanish, right? We were like, well, Mexico or Argentina or Spain. They have bigger rock and roll business or whatever. And then we were like, well, let's go to Europe because maybe it will be more stable, the economy and stuff. We were speaking about 25 years old, 26 years old. We had no idea. And then it was like, well, let's go to Europe. Okay, but Madrid or Barcelona? I was like, which one has the beach? <laughs> That's how we ended up here. That's exactly how we ended up here at the beach. They don't speak much Spanish either, but right. it's home for a long while. We've done some albums here and the beach is still here. So. Yeah, it's funny how certain decisions that really end up impacting your career are things that are made based on kind of random choices, no? But they end up working out. You guys have loyal fans here. And of course, there's that little little Grammy nomination that happened in 2014, which most musicians dream about. And you guys almost never talk about it. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy for you guys, of course, as a fellow musician, that's an amazing achievement, but I think it's even more amazing that that's not one of the first things that comes out of all three of your band members' mouths whenever you guys talk about music. You're always talking about music and not about the accolades, but that must have been an amazing experience. What was it like to be there? Well, you know, you always, if you can't watch the Grammys or the billboards or the, you at least read who's nominated, who's not, to see what's the tendency, or at least I do, as I guess most musicians do, and you're always like into it at least a bit and the grammys well something that we've always seen and you admire loads of people that are there you know? they're like where you should go where you should move to or at least <laughs> who to make fun of <laughs> <laughs> it's like this and it was a really interesting moment in the career of because as i said before we moved here all together
older, younger, and the same band that started out almost in high school, beginning in university. We had our two albums and then we made a couple more here. And then one of the band members, the founding band members, left the band. He was like, I had a kid, I can't do it anymore. He even moved out of Barcelona. So it was like a big blow because you're used to your team, your crew and family, you know, because so many years together. But I don't know whose idea it was, but we said, let's continue. I said I wanted to continue like immediately because I had some cool song. For me, it's like this. When I have some song that I really want to record, this is the small seed to spurt out the whole album. I mean, you can't change it. You can't make him come back. So we just continued and we did this album. We called up a friend or another Venezuelan musician. He's been playing big leagues and small leagues. Ezequiel, Ezequiel Serrano Valencia. He's He's one of two amazing artists in Venezuela, amazing arranger, and the mom is one of the biggest singers there in Colombia and Venezuela. He knows his stuff. He knows a lot of music. We've always been like self-taught and they play by ear. Of course, now with YouTube, it's easier not to get there. But this guy, we said, he's like another brother. We called him to do this album. It was like a continuation of a second episode of a saga that was called El Final del Mundo, no? the end of the world. We did first Can You Pee? And then we we wanted to continue, you know, speaking about this subject. Yeah, it was amazing because we blurted it out, you know, when it happens, when you're writing some songs, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not easy at all. But sometimes the songs are just there, waiting for you to grab the guitar and just play it. And it was just beautiful. And it led to another. I was about to leave Barcelona. I was like, okay guys, it's been a nice run. This is the last song for now. I wanted to take a break and maybe move elsewhere. And I burned the bridges or whatever. I had no money, not much. So I had enough money to just get out of Barcelona and start the new somewhere else. And we got the call like, you guys have been renominated for the Latin Grammys. And we're like, for what? <laughs> like, yeah, your new album, best rock album in Latin Grammys. We're like, wow. So we're like, well, if there's a chance, we have to go to this huge party there in Las Vegas. I've never been to Las Vegas. I've been to the States many times, but not to Las Vegas. It's like Disney, you know, but with steroids, alcohol, tobacco, you can smoke inside and crazy place. But we got there. The whole experience was really great. It was very humbling, you know, you see those people working so hard. I was sitting close to Carlos Santana, no? I used to love him when I was first starting to listen to guitar players and such. And he was a pioneer mixing in New York, the salsa, the African music, this African rhythms and the rock and roll with the jazz. And he was sitting right there and he knew we were new and passing by, he was like, if or not, it was like, what? Los Lobos were there, also were very kind. Some Spanish guy, Enrique Bumburi was like, wow, oh, congratulations, they were very kind. It was nice. And all the colors, the lights, the spectacle. And then some Latin music that you may like or may not like, but it's huge. And I got to see it all. It was very interesting, very educating. And yeah, we'll do it again. Let's see. <laughs> It was fun to be there, but for sure we don't play for exactly this to be nominated or not. We just play for ourselves. If we have a cool song that we need to get out there, that's the main reason to continue. So when you're writing a song, do you typically get an idea of words, music, both, and bring it to Will? Or does Will bring you ideas? Are you all just kind of collaborative? Or how do you guys go about making music? As I said, we're like family, so it depends on how the family is. I remember for one album, I was just producing songs and songs and songs the music and just pitching all this music to him to will so he could blurt out whatever feelings he had because he was having a real hard time in that moment couple of broken hearts decisions growing up no and i remember that this album was made that way i was pitching him lots of music to get him motivated to just speak about stuff it worked out fine he's still with us but mainly when I write a song and get the guitar, if I find a couple of chords that go well together or something that relaxes me or excites me, maybe it's a new chord, maybe it's something like this, and I stick with it, then I hum along some melody. And the melody usually tells me that this word goes there. And you say the word, todo, <laughs> and then from todo, you know, oh, what could go with this? Or why todo, no? And what kind of song is it? It's like a hook, no? From the sea, and then, then you pick up all the 
life that can come with it. It's an amazing thing. As a composer, it's like being an antenna. You really are not doing much. It's translating or giving a body to all your feelings, all your knowledge and all your experience. It's really weird. It is a very weird process, for sure. The process of making an album, you have to actually construct something, but then when you're live, you often go off into this very improvised world that counts on your knowledge and your experience, of course, to be able to do it. Do you feel like being in the studio and being a live performer, are they different animals? Are they the same? Do you prefer one or the other? I love both and they complement each other so much. It's like when you're doing a photo session, it's the same thing with a recording, you know? When you're recording an album, imagine it's like, they're gonna take this photo, so I better get my cool shirt, let's comb my hair, look this way, look this certain way. How do you want this photo to sound? But when you're live, it depends on how you're feeling in that exact moment. So obviously it's much more dynamic and you just flow with the audience, that energy. Now, now that I'm speaking out loud, I pretty much prefer live stuff because this communion with the people and yourself, you can excite someone or make them laugh or make them think and just with sounds or with attitudes. Well, you know, I've seen you do that. <laughs> just the way you look at the people. And it is pretty exciting. It is pretty exciting to do that. And each time make it different for myself. I just do it for myself because I've been doing this longer than I've been a doctor playing music and performing. I remember my first concert was like at 13 with like not just my mom, my dad and my grandma not as the audience. I love it just being there and make people feel something, you know? I don't know if this is kind of stretching the metaphor, but I don't think so. You know, when you play music, as you talked about, it's this communion with people, you can really affect mm. people. And as a doctor, your job is to heal people, right? So do you ever feel like they have that in common? Mm. Sometimes the song of Paul McCartney, I see lonely people in the crowd. I see sad people in the crowd. And sometimes I pick on them, like specifically, and I try to make them part of something. When I see somebody lonely in the crowd, it doesn't matter the crowd, you know how it is. Small or big crowd you play, like there's no tomorrow. And many times I do feel the healing power of the music. Sometimes I have it. Sometimes I can actually make it happen, make the flow shower the person with some kind of good feeling. Sometimes you see the people go out of the concert like thanking you more than congratulating you, like thanking you for making them feel a bit. And this is, it is healing music. And not all of the time I try to do this, but sometimes. Most of the time I'm just trying to make people laugh and have a good time, even with sad songs, you know? You were talking about Luz Verde as a musical family. And of course you guys, it's also a different thing because you guys have been together for so long. But you also have another mm -hmm. musical family, the Alma de Boca yeah. project. And that's a very different style of music. Your role in it is different. It's like asking you to compare like two children you know it's kind of hard to say which one do you love more but so that's not the question but more how is the experience different in being part of one band versus being part of another and was it challenging in the beginning to adapt to a different style of music because Amade Boquerón is rumba and rock versus rock rock here in Spain they have expression no tienes mucha cara you have a lot of faces <laughs> when we started this project with Jordi and Will we weren't very serious about it the project started out because Jordi had these songs that did not go well with his blues and rock band, Los Incorregibles, because they were like boleros, more like for older people, no? bolero, rumba, cha cha cha. And we didn't know how to play these things no, at all. Every rhythm has its certain technique. But he needed help. He wanted to develop these songs. The songs, we were immediately in love with them because they were so funny. You can connect very well with his lyrics. He has something for everyone and he writes like he speaks. Very eloquent kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And he needed a band to record. And a friend of his was just finished to build a studio, recording studio. He was like, oh, you could all come and we can test the studio. It was like this. We did the first album with El Mar Boquerón. And then from there, we didn't have any intentions with the band at all or the songs or he or us or anyone but then we did the first gig and then concerts started to pop out of seemingly nowhere people connected a lot with the rhythm with the songs with everything for the second album we studied a bit the rhythms no because you can't be so uh, and it's so interesting to learn new things the rumba rhythm is something that is really similar to salsa and i listen to classic salsa a lot 
as a Caribbean boy that I am. In Venezuela, you listen to, well, I listen to rock, but mainly the radio, you have salsa, merengue, all these Afro-Latin rhythms. It was in there. So it's been so interesting to play something different and pushing the limit on your own musicianship. It's been a wild ride. Ten years we've been together and that family has been growing and growing. First it was just Jordi, Will and I, then I was like, okay, I'd like a percussionist but that is not a percussionist to give character to this and i brought david that is actually a guitar teacher he was playing the cajon and this was the spark for the rest of the project and then amazing people we've met on the way it's a whole different thing with luz verde no it, with alma de boquerón jordi has all formats like duos trios the whole band like we're six now and also it's been growing from three guys it's really exciting to see how the songs have grown but more electric because we started out like a rumba, no? very acoustic, classic guitar, like the guitar you have in the background, like a classic Spanish guitar. And now we have this electric bass, drums. And it's very interesting. It's very interesting, very fun. Even if you don't understand the lyrics, you'll dance probably. I enjoy it a lot. Well, as a musician, you have to do so many other things besides just play music and just write songs, which are not just anything. Those are big things. But then on top of that, there's all the rest. There's the recording, there's the production, there's the mixing there's the mastering there's all the promotion there's booking there's touring if there's somebody who's a young musician who's watching this thinking wow that sounds amazing i want to do that and i've always wanted to do that and i'm in med school right now and i still want to do that what advice would you give him or her if they said where do i start what do i do <laughs> focus and be constant don't drop the ball ever if you want to really play guitar practice Try to practice as much as you can. Explore, don't be scared to explore different rhythms. There's many musicians that say like, no, I'm just metal or I'm just jazz or I only... Don't close your doors on any style of music because it's music is the whole universe. You can bite a little piece of it, but it's still there. And once you relax and enjoy the rest of it, the experience will be much better. And about medicine, if you're gonna do it for money, don't do it because you love it and try to sleep as much as you can. Drink loads of water, you need to be hydrated. But really, 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 just do it. Don't be afraid. If you, if you want to do something, the only thing you have to do is do it. Thank you so much, Carlos, for taking the time to share your stories with us. Man, these interviews just go by so fast. The part that you guys don't see is the editing, where I have to choose which parts of the interview to include, which parts to cut. And believe me, it is such hard work because I always end up with three, four times more material than I need because all of our guests are such fascinating individuals. And I just never want to cut any of it. But I guess that's a good problem to have, right? See you next month on the Metropolitan Culture Corner. And thank you, as always, for tuning in and for supporting local art and culture. Thank you.